Good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you to the Society for the opportunity to talk today. Just a couple of weeks ago, we completed our top-line analysis of our phase three study in Asia for our dengue vaccine. So it is a great opportunity to, to actually for the first time to talk about a program since getting those data. And in 15 minutes, I'll take you through uh, where our program is effectively and where we want to go. Oops. So of course, you cannot get through a program without acknowledging the investigators and the volunteers required to conduct uh, vaccine development, and of course, I want to acknowledge all my uh, Sanofi Pasteur colleagues. I will only spend literally a couple of minutes on each of these sections to get everyone on the same page about the burden of disease, to talk about our technology, our phase 2B clinical proof of concept, our phase 3 results that have recently come out, our manufacturing facility, and then I'll try and summarize at the end. So for those less familiar, dengue is a life-threatening vector-borne disease that ranges from silent infection, which is probably the bolus of disease, through to severe hemorrhagic fever. It's a flavivirus with four serotypes. It's an arbovirus, so it's driven by the vector, um, which has resulted in a staggering burden of disease. And you can see in this pyramid, two and a half billion people a year, every single day of their lives are exposed to dengue. A hundred million people succumb to the infection. Two million of those are severe, and 500,000 of those result in hospitalizations, and tragically 20,000 deaths a year. So an enormous burden of disease. And even the febrile form of disease is extremely debilitating, uh, and people that have it have famously described it as breakbone fever. It literally feels like your bones are being broken. And as, as a scientist, one of the things I find most remarkable is the spread of dengue. In just 50 years, there's been a 30-fold increase. If you look at the 1960s, limited activity in Nigeria was reported, India and Asia. By the 1990s, uh, the disease was prevalent across uh, South America and Mexico, now right across uh, tropical Africa and creeping into Northeast uh, Australia. And today, it really spans the entire tropical and subtropical regions. It's into Florida, into Texas. It's now in the Middle East, in Morocco. Uh, an incredible expansion of this disease. And in fact, interestingly, you may, you may know that there was even a local case of dengue indigenous in France last year. So this vector, this disease, is clearly adapting to urbanization. And that's why it's such an important public health issue uh, and the reason that uh, Sanofi Pasteur is so committed. And, and if you don't know, this unmet medical need, there's just no specific drug treatment, there's no effective prevention. If you're a physician dealing with an epidemic of dengue, all you can do is monitor your patients and provide fluid management. So again, any form of effective prevention and treatment is likely to have a major impact. Which is why the WHO has made it extremely clear in its goals by 2020 to reduce uh, morbidity and mortality by 50 and, uh, excuse me, by mortality and morbidity by 50 and 25 percent, respectively. So, Sanofi Pasteur has actually worked 20 years in the R&D uh, for dengue prophylaxis, and the technology we're using today is a live attenuated chimeric virus. So, so what, what does that mean? We've effectively taken the yellow fever vaccine, we've used that backbone, and we've spliced in the structural components of dengue. So we benefit from the genetic stability of the yellow fever vaccine, but mother nature, the immune system, sees dengue. And uh, we use uh, a process that allows us to formulate the vaccine against the four serotypes. So what does the vaccine profile look like today as a target? Well, we want to prevent symptomatic disease, which is virologically confirmed through acute fibrinus uh, febrile illness and virologically confirmed dengue. We want to be able to vaccinate starting from nine months of age through, through uh, all ages. We have a three-dose schedule subcutaneously delivered, and we want to demonstrate efficacy in uh, ages of two to 16, and then bridge immunologically to other age ranges. And we want to have a safety profile typical of any vaccine. Summarizing, 10 years worth of immunogenicity data is pretty hard, but we tried to do it on this one slide. So you can see in the top, 
neutralization. So this is killing the virus in culture. And you can see the colors represent the different serotypes of dengue, and you have a log scale for your neutralization. And you can see that whatever country this vaccine is used in, whatever age range, and whatever pre-existing immunity that exists at baseline, we're able to elicit a balanced immune response against all four serotypes. In 2012, we reported in The Lancet um, a milestone um, study in 4,000 children in Thailand, which was a 2B study, proof of concept, and it literally transformed the dengue field, and I think the following slide will, will explain that to you. It was a study with the same endpoint, so looking to prevent symptomatic, virologically confirmed dengue, and we failed the primary endpoint. That's because, as you can see here, the lower bound was below zero. So what was the reason for that? If you look on the right-hand side, we had so many cases in this trial, we could actually do a fairly meaningful analysis statistically by ITT, by attention to treat, after one dose. And you can see for yourselves that the lower bound of efficacy was above zero for serotypes 1, 3, and 4, but not for serotype 2. And this was a surprise for us as it was the field, because as you can see on the left-hand side, we have good neutralization of the virus in culture. So it really transformed the dengue field, because after 20, 30 years of believing that neutralization would provide efficacy with this assay, uh, the field was turned on its head. We've spent two years trying to understand that efficacy observation. And we've looked at five areas. Um, and uh, because we're short on time, suffice to say, we're, we're more and more confident that we can explain the result in, in Thailand. It's extremely complicated. There isn't a single smoking gun. And we plan to publish very soon uh, these investigations to explain that observed efficacy. More importantly, the phase three studies that are reaching completion um, is where I want to turn to now and give you uh, the top line data from the Asian study. This is the first of two efficacy studies which we call CYD14. Um, and um, I'm sure you'll agree, a major milestone in public health uh, to have these results. So what are the two efficacy studies uh, that are being conducted? On the left-hand side, we have the study in South America, CYD15, performed in five countries uh, across 22 sites in subjects aged 9 to 16 years. And this is an extremely large vaccine study in 21,000 subjects. On the right-hand side, which is what I'll give you the top-line data to, for today, is uh, a identical study in its design, except for the different countries and the different age range, 2 to 14 years in, uh, in 10,000 subjects. And the age range, if you have the question already in your head, the difference effectively reflects the peak uh, incidence of disease in those regions. At the bottom, you can see that the vaccine is delivered in three doses, as I mentioned before, 0, 6, 12. We then count the cases after the third dose, and the blue circle is where we have our primary endpoint uh, for efficacy, which is one year after the third dose. And critically for the dengue field, in, in line with the WHO guidelines, we then follow the patients for five years after the last dose for safety observations. To drill down into the Asian study in a little bit more detail, this is the uh, study CYD14. Uh, Again, 10,000 subjects, 2 to 14 years of age, randomized 2 to 1 between vaccine and placebo. And at the countries, you can see they're listed for yourself. And again, we're looking to see the reduction in symptomatic, virologically confirmed dengue 28 days after the last dose for a 12-month follow-up. So you see that blue arrow at the bottom, the per protocol period. That's the important period where we're counting the cases to look for efficacy. So we're very proud uh, a couple of weeks ago to have announced that this phase three study, the world's first phase three study in the dengue uh, field of prophylaxis, uh, successfully achieved its primary endpoint with a 56% reduction of disease in this study of over 10,000 volunteers. So again, we think that a major public health milestone to, to share these results with you. The safety, absolutely essential, is consistent with all previous trials uh, with this vaccine and has a good safety profile. And actually what surprised us 
which is the reason we put it in our announcement, is the incidence rate of this disease. One in 20 children in our trial succumb to dengue during the two years uh, of this study. And that one in 20 is every year as an attack rate. So I, I'm sure you'll agree that speaks to the magnitude of dengue disease in these regions. So a quick word on safety. We have a safety database now of 41,000 subjects. 30,000 of those have received at least one dose of vaccine. Um, and again, the, the, the safety profile is consistent across all of our studies and is reassuring. <coughs> so with that result in mind, we wanted to talk uh, just at the end about uh, a new dedicated manufacturing facility uh, in France. The reason I want to mention this is that if we're going to have a dent on dengue, if anyone's going to have a dent on dengue through prophylaxis, you're going to have to supply vaccine to the 100 endemic countries that suffer from this disease, which is why Sanofi committed six years ago to produce the facility, which you can see the pictures here for yourself, uh, three main buildings uh, staffed by nearly 200 professional uh, manufacturing people, which would allow us by 2016 to have 100 million doses available um, for, for vaccination. Um, if, if you don't already appreciate it, I'd like to emphasize that typically vaccines go from the north to the south, right? And this is a model, this is a development where the vaccine is going directly to the south. So uh, we're extremely proud to, uh, to make that point and emphasize that point with this vaccine development. So how can I summarize? Um, dengue is a major public health issue, which Dr. Farrow mentioned at the beginning as well, affecting nearly half of the world's population. We've uh, spent 20 years on this to get to the moment to where we are today, and our goal is to provide sufficient vaccine to deal with this public health issue. Uh, we have a safety database of over 40,000 participants, as I've mentioned, and we have these two efficacy studies ongoing, the first top-line results we've just shared with you, and uh, in the third quarter this year, we will have uh, our top-line results from the second study in South America. We've shown a reduction of 50%, 56% of the disease, and we've met our primary endpoint. Uh, and I thank you for your attention. <laughs>